Hello everybody, it's Dr. Steve coming at you live from the Core Wellness Institute. Well, it's not live by the time you see it, but you get the picture. It's a Friday wrap-up kind of thing. I haven't given you a good three pillars talk in a while. I'm going to talk one piece about mindset, one piece about movement, one piece about nutrition. The mindset piece first, we're going to talk about it's training movement and nervous system, not muscles, right? We're training, whenever you train, whenever you do posture, whenever you do exercise, you are training movement programs in your brain. You're training your central nervous system for coordination, agility, balance. You're not training a specific muscle, you're training a movement. Very, very important to understand that we are training the nervous system, we're training movements. And so, you know, what good is it to, to bend over like this and work bicep curls if you're not functional. What's this doing for you? Yes, it's going to build some muscle, but it's not going to do anything for your function. Okay? So we're training movement programs. We want the movement programs you had when you were a child. We want the upright posture. So it doesn't do you any good to train like this, right? I shouldn't say that. It does metabolic good. Building muscle does metabolic good. Burns fat gives you more energy, builds mitochondria, all that kind of stuff, but it does not do anything for how you function through your daily life. We want to be upright and especially through the thoracic spine. So we need to train these movement programs, not muscles. That, and getting into thoracic spine brings me right into the movement piece. The movement piece I want to talk about is getting movement through your thoracic spine or your T4 area. Okay, the thoracic four or your middle thoracic spine. Had a gentleman in today um, in his early, maybe even mid 70s, I can't remember. Avid tennis player, okay, plays with his son on on Mondays and his and his uh, his daughter on Fridays, or, or you know he plays with an active tennis player, and he has a very rounded kyphotic spine, and we and and he therefore whenever you have a rounded kyphotic spine, what happens? Your your head goes forward, right? This is the forward head posture that none of us really like to see when we take pictures of ourselves. And we see ourselves in pictures and you think, oh my gosh, does my posture really look like that? Well, yeah, it does. Okay, but you cannot train your forward head by just taking your head and pu pushing it back like this. I, I am limited in how far I can pull my neck back whenever I have not got motion in my thoracic spine. I'm going to go as far as I can this way. Now watch what happens whenever I fix my thoracic spine. Do you see what happens with the position of my head? And actually it changed my voice as well. It opens everything up. You get decongestion through your system and literally you can become decongested. Uh, I, I, on my camping trip I took with my son with those 60 kids, one of the, the kid that was in front of me had an allergic reaction when he was outside all day. He was congested. Couldn't He woke up in, in, at, at midnight and said, Steve, I can't see. Eyes were glued shut. You guys have been there somewhere along the line. His eyes were glued shut. Horrible allergies. And he could barely swallow. Couldn't breathe through his nose. And all I did was give him a little bit of decompression. Right? I just took him and just gently gave him a little bit of decompression. I pulled his head gently off his shoulders and just provided that gentle traction and, and just opened his chest up. And he was amazed. He said, wow, my, my, my stuff's starting to drain now. I can breathe. I also did some, some massage on his sinuses and his frontal sinuses and his mastoid sinuses just to break that stuff up so he could get it going and breathe again. And lo and behold, he could. He, he was breathing in. He was decongested. And he didn't have to take a decongestant. Okay, that's a little tangent, but in a very important one for you to understand. You have, and this is a very decompressing and decongesting maneuver to be upright and vertical like you were designed to be. You, you went through the time you were born, the time you were four, four or four and a half years old, you developed this perfect upright posture, and the goal now is to get back to as much of that as we possibly can. Back to the thoracic spine. To, in order for you to fix the forward head posture and get rid of all of the tension headaches and suboccipital headaches and, and uh, even migraine headaches. We, uh, this weekend I went to a seminar which reinforced into my mind that the first cervical vertebra is intricately con connected with migraine and sending 
vascular problems and having vascular headaches when the upper cervical spine is congested. So in order to get this back and get rid of all those headaches and all that tension, you have to have motion through your T-spine. Now, in the fundamental exercise series that you get whenever you uh, sign up for the, uh, uh, on my mailing list, I have a couple of great um, th exercises in there. They have to do, there's lots of different ways to do it. Uh, if one does use the foam roll, I love the foam roll. This is a 36 by 6 inch axis foam roll by OPTP. And I use this every single day with my patients. And all we do, and this is what I did with that gentleman, the, uh, the, the 70 some year old gentleman. I didn't sit back on his tail and just kind of roll out to break up the stiffness through his thoracic spine. Okay, you see that? And when you do that, then you get back up and you say, okay, wow, now I can get my head back. Now I don't have as many headaches. Now I don't have as much carpal tunnel. Now, because of all the closure and compression of the nerves going out of my neck down into my wrists. So, T4, okay? Foam roll, great, great, great uh, tool for that. Another test you can do to check your T4 is the overhead squat. Hands overhead. Can you squat and keep your hands overhead? Okay? This is advanced, but this is uh, for you people who, who think you have fitness, right? Get in there and see if you can get down and do a full squat with your feet flat. With your feet flat and keep your hands overhead. You have to have thoracic spine mobility in order to do that. Okay? So that fixes the forward head posture, or it gives you the opportunity to fix the forward head posture. And then you have to do other stuff to make sure you maintain it and train endurance in those muscles that then keep you there, or else the rubber band's going to snap back and it's going to pull you right back where you were. You have to train these motor programs. Remember, this is a posture program. It's just software in your mind. We're not, we're not focusing on the hardware. We're focusing on the software. That's what this is all about. So, that's the physical piece. Last piece, nutrition. Has to do again with fats, omega-3 versus omega-6s. I know I've talked about this before, but the omega-6s, too much omega-6 coming from grain or grain-fed animal products predominantly, right? Versus omega-3s, which are anti-inflammatory from greens. And if you choose to eat animal products, things that ate only greens, you have more omega-3. So whenever you have too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3, here's the threes over here. When your threes are down here and your sixes are up here, guess what happens? You get lots of inflammation, okay? And inflammation is the root of all disease. It's the fire. It, you know, inflammation is important for our bodies, but it's also whenever it gets out of control, it's like a forest fire that burns out of control. It damages adjacent tissues, causes cancer, heart disease, diabetes, all of these diseases that we suffer with as a society. So, and also what it does is, and this is the point I wanted to make, it creates overactivity in your brain. It makes your adrenals kick out more cortisol, the stress hormone. So this is nutrition-induced stress. If you have too much arachidonic acid, which comes from the omega-6s, okay? Omega-6s go down the pipeline. Omega-3s go down the pipeline. Whenever you're Whenever your omega-6s go down the pipeline, they get turned into the arachidonic acid. And this is the inflammation thing. This tells your brain, ah, something's wrong. Scream, run, do whatever you have to do. Turn on the stress signals, okay? This is nutrition-induced stress. You have to get rid of those omega-6s. Not get rid of, excuse me. Balance the omega-6s. So how do you do that? Very simple, okay? Here's the simple formula. More green, right? Pump the greens up and decrease the grain. That's the simple formula. And if you choose to eat animal products, if you're going to choose animal products, you have to choose only animal products who have done what and ate what their whole life? Grass, clover, all, the, all of the wonderful things that just grow out of the ground that are green. This makes lots of omega-3 in the animal product versus the omega-6s. We do not want the corn-fed beef, which takes one barrel of crude oil to send that cow to market. By the time you use the tractors to grow the corn, to ship the corn to the factory farm, and you do all that stuff, when you do the calculations, and this comes from Michael Pollan's book, The Omnivore's Dilemma, one barrel of crude oil to produce one steer to market. 
Think about that for a second. So it's not only health impacts, it's environmental impact. So, okay, well, we, <laughs> there you go. There's the three pillars, the mindset, movement, and nutrition. Hope you enjoyed that. If you have any comments or questions, please post them down below and have an awesome, awesome, awesome day.